So, Flavia, you sound like you were saying goodbye, but you're still here. I don't know if you just left the machine on. Anyway, uh, Emily, why don't we start with your thing um, super quick? I I keep saying it's super quick. I'll probably spend half an hour trying to figure out what's going on. Hopefully it's super quick. I'm just going to, I'll have my uh, version in the background here just so I can check it. Okay. Um, we have the situation again. Oh, there it is. Again? Oh. No, you're oh, here. here we go. Good, good. Oh. Man. Okay. Okay. Um, so do you want me to start from the top? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So Can you just, it looks like you've already run something down there in the console. Did you, did you run the head or? Yeah, yeah. this was when I was trying to do it with the acid damaged. Okay. Uh, maybe maybe just. With the uh, urbanization. Yeah, maybe just control L so we clean out the console just to start. So I kind of see what happens when. I'm going to clear this too. There. Okay. So just, just maybe. <laughs> maybe run. Um... Do you want me to run the whole thing or? Yeah. So <laughs> forgive me for asking, but it seems like some weird relationship between Guelph and Laurentian here, but okay. I, yeah. <laughs> For whatever reason, my uh, my desktop still saves things to my University of Guelph OneDrive. No, you know, you don't even have to explain because OneDrive is so weird and kind of where it goes back to. I have the same issue with a couple of other places yeah. at OneDrive. Okay. So where did you get down to? Line 16 or? Uh, I ran the whole thing, but I can, oh, okay. I can go bit by bit too. No, that's okay. We'll, we'll start with that and, and oh, great. It worked. Okay. Yeah, that I start having issues. Maybe go back um, and, oh, I see. Subscript. You know, okay. I know why you got that error message. That helps. I think it's because I only have two. Yeah. So you've got levels. two groups. You got two groups and with DFA. Um, the maximum number of DF axes is either one less than the number of groups or um, one less than the number of, um, of response variables, you know, whichever one is less, right? So, and, and in this thing, and this is, this is actually my problem because I've, <laughs> I should have a, I should have like a conditional there. Um, so DF2, where, wherever it refers to DF2, you should just hashtag it. Right. Yeah, because it's and then drop no such it. thing as DFA.scores, comma, two, because, yeah. But, but the DFA, everything... All that's fine. It's just when it tries to extract those scores and use them. But, mm -hmm. and you're looking at a beautiful, um, should actually have different fill in those two, but you have the two groups and that's that one DF1 axis. So it's showing you how it's picked an axis, which best, I'm, I'm looking at the plot in the bottom right corner. It's best yeah. separating those two groups, right? So there's a, there's a couple of observations there from uh, the reference lakes that are uh, that are you know overlapping, but for the most part, it's pretty good separation. Mm -hmm. How did your uh, 
can you show me your other results in the console down below because it'll have the um, the classification matrix there somewhere mm -hmm. yeah yeah there we go all right and this <laughs> this is always the um um it's it's always slightly obscure to me i i think mm -hmm. it's the the dfa classification are the rows and then the actual are the columns so so it looks like it correctly classified 15 reference lakes oh, okay but, but two of the reference lakes it misclassified as acid damage lakes and those would be the two that you see in the plot over on the right that's why it's always good to have the plot with this so the two <laughs> See the lower plot on the right, where you see those two observations that are off. Yeah, they're overlapping with the acid damage lakes above because those are, that's the same scale on both those plots. Um, whereas with the acid damaged lakes, you've got uh, four of them that were classified as reference lakes. That's that that's the bar that's right to the right of zero there. Oh, okay, this one here. No, like further over. See, all of, all of the ones on that plot are acid damage. Oh, yeah. and, and the zero line is like the line of separation. So that's why the ones that are misclassified in the top are to the right of zero. The ones that are misclassified in the bottom are to the left of zero. So you've got four in the top that are acid-damaged lakes, but they were classified. They're on the right-hand side of zero, so they're classified as reference lakes. You've got two on the bottom that are reference lakes that are to the left of zero, and they're classified as acid-damaged lakes. So that's, a, that's actually a beautiful combination of... <laughs> classification table on the I mean you're gonna want to kind of make it nicer for the lab like the mm -hmm. plot is great but the you know the the output that's generated in the console is pretty ugly looking but um no that's a that's a a nice result what were the variables it was using to uh, what what quantitative variables did you use in the Manova? Uh, I used species richness, maximum depth, uh, drainage area, and then mean annual temperature. Cool. And do you have the plot of the relationship between, or probably didn't do the SPLOM because it, maybe get rid it of the, work. yeah, get rid of the DF2 mm -hmm. line and then rerun it and we'll see the SPLOM because that'll, that'll tell you how, um, the role that each original variable played in defining that discriminant axis. You know, if it was all about species richness or it's all about a combination of richness and watershed area or whatever. Okay, what did you do? Oh, I just don't have this one in. Oops. Oh, no, it didn't work. Yeah, it would just run the whole thing. What the heck? String. Um, yeah, so you still got... Okay, can you just do a do a control A or command A and, and just... Do the whole thing? Yeah, do the whole thing. It's kind of slow, unless it's just taking a while to get to me. Uh, no, we're uh, we're still on modified internet uh, at Laurentian as a result of the the cyber attack. So, oh, 
it uh, the program they've installed uh, for safety has a an issue with R. It thinks it's a computer virus. Yeah, but it, I mean, you're just running it off your computer right now, are you? Yeah, but because I'm on the the internet, uh, it's can't remember what the software is called, but it it fights against. Oh, it's probably it, it's probably because it's interacting with the cloud. I think so. Yeah, because if you're if you're reading or writing files to OneDrive or whatever, that'll freak it out. Yeah. Okay, it should be coming through shortly. There we go. Oh, beautiful. Okay. So DF1 looks like nothing really to do with drainage area. Mm -hmm. um, or it's, a, it, yeah, it's honestly, it looks like species richness where the reference lakes, I mean, this is kind of like poster for SFS. Yeah. <laughs> no, reference lakes. And higher richness, and that's that's what's the main distinguisher, I think, of reference and acid. I mean, there's a bit of um, I, you know, if we were really doing this, I'd probably log drainage area. I don't know if you have already. I do have a log drainage area uh, it, variable, so I can change it. Yeah, but it would probably work better, just not because you know to get higher correlation or whatever. It's just because drainage area itself, like that's, I don't know if you noticed, but that's what I have in the, the SimStream stuff because it's like a doubling of drainage area means 10% more species kind of thing. Yeah. So it's just a kind of a more, the proportional change in drainage area as a predictor makes more scientific sense often than the absolute value of it. And notice mm -hmm. how they're all getting bunched together. I don't know if that's like Lake Superior or whatever you have on the far right there, but there's obviously oh, this one. Well, if you look at the drainage area scatter plots. Oh here. Yeah, there's one way over on the right side. Yeah. And that's going to be a big lake relative to all the other ones. And that's kind of that'll be affecting things. Yeah, we have a I have a couple lakes that are in the tens of thousands of hectares. Uh, so their drainage areas are massive and they skew uh, a lot of my data. So I'll try this with log. Okay. Uh, but anyway, it seems to work okay now. Yeah, it's working now. I think the issue was um, that I had DF2 still. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the only trick will be if, if you, if you do the three group, you got to have the DF2 modify that script and sort of say, mm -hmm. if, variables are or if groups group numbers are this then do the df2 thing but if not then don't but that i'll stick that in eventually but yeah yeah awesome nice okay well, thank you okay anybody else have something ready or do you want to chew on omar do you want to wait till tomorrow to talk about it I have something ready if Omar doesn't. Yeah, go around. <laughs> okay. So I actually figured out the Manova, but it looks terrible. So I was wondering if you could just look at it. Real right? life. Yeah. Do you think I get you to work on real data? It's never as nice as the textbook <laughs> ones. It definitely doesn't look as good as Emily's was looking. So I'm not I'm wondering <laughs> if I should maybe change my categorical variable, but I don't know if that would really Let's let's look at it first. Okay. All right. Uh, well, you got something. I got something. Yeah. Oh, this um, is the uh, this is the birds foraging. Yes. <laughs> um. So I have that, and then obviously my histogram doesn't look great. 
um, I did the two different, like yes and no for success. So I don't know if increasing this is the options, maybe doing like breed instead would make a difference because I have a bunch of different breeds, but. Okay, let me let me wrap my head around what you got. Um, okay, do you want me to zoom it in a bit, make it bigger? Uh, no, I'm I'm more looking at the script right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> make a deal, temp. Also, the library. XLSX. I feel like that has to be that's related to Excel, right? It doesn't work for some reason on my R version. I don't know if it's important for this script, but no, because oh, okay. it, it's really just used for getting the data in and out, you know, okay. from or to a, a, an Excel spreadsheet. And you've okay, got your, yeah, you've got your data in R form, so you're good. Awesome. Um, okay. Uh, bird, my data iris. By... Oh no, sorry. Um, success is factor success. Dive data. Can you remind me what dive is? Um, so I just have dive as the amount of time the bird spent in the water. Okay. And okay. And can you show me, it looks like you ran this. Can you show me the one-way ANOVAs, please, down below in the console? If you scroll up, you should be able to see them. Sure. Let me just make the console a little bit bigger. Yeah. One more. Okay. I have a couple, but. Uh, do you want me to just start at the top? Okay. So, yeah, so dive differs between yes and no's. Uh, DO differs between yes and no's. And temperature differs between yes and no's. And the multivariate version is also significant okay yeah. keep going down and group means okay so and all all these are kind of helpful in um <laughs> this is this really makes sense so yeah when they spend longer diving they're more apt to be successful. successful. Yeah, <laughs> it does make sense. Um, but the figure, I mean, I, we can see a very clear relationship with the DO and the temp, but obviously the dive, I, there were so many zeros. I think it just really, I, there's nothing I can do about that, but. So tell me about the zeros though. So these, like, how did birds qualify to get into the study if they didn't die? Or some of them are, are dabblers, or what, what's the deal there? I'm not sure. So some of the birds, they'll just, like, look at the fish from a tree. They'll stay in a perch. So they'll be interested, but they won't actually go into the water. Or so they would be <laughs> stalking them along the beach on the sand, but not actually enter the water. So those ones get the zero for the duration in the water because they don't actually attempt to fish. They just okay. like watch the fish, but don't enter the water, if that makes sense. So yeah, but um, a radical thought here, if you don't, and I mean, it's like, if I don't get a cup of Tim's, 
coffee, I don't get a roll up to win thing. Um, yeah. So should the zeros even be in the game here? That's a good question. I could you, remove them, but there there would be a lot less data, but I could still remove it anyways. I, I'm just thinking, so was it ever the case? I don't think it could be that you had a zero and you got a yes. No. <laughs> so there's that. I also have the philosophical question. How do you know that a bird is looking at a fish? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was just more of an observation. Okay. <laughs> just that it, it felt a little bit like, uh, I don't know, uh, I, can, I can read this bird's mind. He's interested. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, look. So, okay, let's keep going. We'll, we'll leave that one aside for a sec. You might try it. it it's kind of like when uh, Flavia was showing me earlier, uh, she did a, a NMDS and PCA, and one of her observations was really wacko, like really oh. out there. And it makes all the others very similar. Yeah. And I said, well, um, why don't you take that one out and rerun it? Because you're not... You know, it's kind of like anything where if you've got if you've got a group of objects and one's super different, it makes all the ones that aren't super different seem much more similar to each other. Yeah. So, but um, so let's keep scrolling down because I just want to uh, interpret. I think it's, oh no, there's still this too. Yeah. So. So if they weren't successful, um, most of the unsuccessful got properly classified as unsuccessful just using the the dive time, the DO, and the temp. The 114, 11 of them got classified as successful, even though they weren't. And 53 got classified as unsuccessful, even though they were. That's what that's saying, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the, the, the neat thing there, it would be interesting to look at, and I'm not saying this, you know, do this or you won't get A plus in the lab or whatever. I'm just saying this out of curiosity. The 11 that got misclassified, I wonder what they're like, you know, the 11. Yeah. Um, so what I would do since, it, and, and go to that last histogram thing. It's just before the splong. Yeah. Because that, that's super weird. I know. Because you know, there's so many zeros, I think. Well, and just thinking about the conversation that uh, I had with Emily, so the same deal is going on here. So the unsuccessful ones are on the right-hand side of the zero there. Yeah. So it's it's plotted kind of weirdly, but the successful ones are on the left-hand side. So so you're actually seeing those few um on the 11 unsuccessful are the ones that are trailing out towards the left of zero on that bottom plot. Yeah, I see that. And the 32 <laughs> Over that are successful, sorry, 53 that are yeah. successful are to the right side of zero on the top. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, what I would do, again, just for curiosity, like keep this, it, it's, it's valid, but then just, and we we can do it right now. Just to take a quick look, go up to the top and get rid of anybody, any observation that uh, had a value of zero for the time. So if you go go up to the top of your script, I think I can tell you how to do this. Okay. 
Um, so bird, just after it, line eight. Yeah, bird is assigned to. I don't. Is there a quick way to say that <laughs> bracket dash? Okay. Say, yeah. <laughs> um, then subset in small letters bracket uh, bird. Um, comma, bird, dollar sign, uh, where's the? Success? No, 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 uh, time. What's the dive time one? Dive. Okay. Dive and then space, exclamation mark, equals, space zero i i think that'll work but try it and see if it just do it do the first few lines so we know if it's gonna yeah uh, it maybe it says they're masked so maybe that would work no it worked it worked yeah all right let's run yeah. it yeah run the whole thing yeah okay oh no error in model frame Die success drop unused. True. Hmm. That's weird. Just a sec here. You know what that you know what happened is what I, happened? Well, I'm not sure you have any dive greater than zero that didn't get a bird do you or didn't get, didn't get a fish uh yeah i think so i think some fish hey. were on the water but they didn't catch. click on click on bird uh like over on the list oh yeah on, on the right yeah so we'll look at success and duration maybe you're right just just click on the word dive there the, at the top and it'll it'll rank them. And there's some no's. So some birds were on the water, but then obviously weren't successful. Um, yeah. But... So uh, Variable lengths differ. Okay, that's the problem. That's the problem. This kind of <laughs> this is a version of the other problem you had. So, oh. um, I'm sorry. No, it's not your fault. Um, error in model formula equals dive. Oh, do 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 dive. Go back to bird, the data set, and hit success, sort by success. There's something going on there. Hit it again? No. Well, shouldn't we look and see in the original data with before I did this to it to see if there's any zeros for yeses? Yeah, but it, it the problem didn't exist before we did this, though. Yeah, that's true. So, um, so 117 lines. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Um, go back to your script, go down to the univariate ANOVAs. That's what's going on here. Um, Uh, 
Okay, uh, clear your, um, yeah, clear those variable values because it's, it might have been content. Now run the whole thing again. I think it worked. Yeah, except for this margin. Maybe. That's so strange. It won't show me it. Has that ever happened to you? No, I don't know what that error in plot new figure margins too large. So it's too big to even show us. Well, that doesn't make well, sense. Like the I'm not sure. You... <laughs> How many groups are there? How many groups? Two, yeah. Yes or no? Oh, right, right, right. Maybe rerun with debug. Good try that. Yeah. It's worth a try, okay. right? Yeah. Hopefully it doesn't remove all my stuff. Here, maybe I'll just, I'm scared. <laughs> Here, let me try clearing these. And then I'll run it again. Oh, that works. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's hmm. lift up the plot. Yeah. Where's uh, DF1? Okay, you better go up in the console. Something's happening. Something weird is going on here. No? It's actually pretty interesting. <laughs> I thought DF1 was part of the, the SPLOM, the, the plot we're looking at now. Well. Did you take it out or? It says DF1 right here. Yeah, but it's gotta be in the list, like line 93. Yeah. After the word dive. Yeah. In quotes, comma, DF1. Because you want it in the SPLOM, that helps you interpret how the original variables, what role they played in. Oh, jeez. Uh -oh. Okay, you got to you gotta kill, <laughs> get the broom out for the variables that are stored, because there's a lot of cross-contamination going on here. All right, I'll run it again. Yeah. Ah, beautiful. Okay. It's, it looks better now. Yeah. This is this is great because um. So, do increasing do decreasing temperature. Yeah. Is distinguishing yes from no. So um, go back one plot. Oh, okay. Interesting. So now you, you've got something. So there's a lot more uh, mistaken. See, that the, the uh, title underneath each of those plots is the actual group, okay, yeah. where they fell on the DF axis. Mm -hmm. So if they're to the left of zero, they were classified as yes. If they're to the right of zero, they're classified as no. And there was a whole bunch or several no's that got classified as yes and, and the reverse, but. Yeah, you can see that here. Yeah, so 81 of the 85 yeses were correctly classified, which is great. Doesn't make sense. So I'm, I'm looking at the plot trying to. <laughs> so I have a question then. Do I need to go back to my all my other plots and now change my answers and add like remove all the zeros, or should I just do it for this one question? 
Oh, just this one question. Jeez. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to get the the plot here to jive with the. Uh, Okay, so DFA, there's 81 yeses. To the left of zero. Oh, that just, I'm having trouble just getting them to, getting the numbers to jive with uh, what I'm seeing in the plot. Although that's density, it still doesn't. This is gonna be hard to interpret. <laughs> uh, go, go ahead one, if you could. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So higher on the DF axis. Okay, go back to that DF plot. I'm sorry. It's okay. Oh. Maybe go back one more plot. No, this that's the just one. the other one. We're only supposed to get two plots for this script, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, the next one. So I'm actually, see, the zero line is not the distinguisher here. That's what's going on. That's why I'm screwed up. So if we look at the yes plot, the upper plot, mm -hmm. look at to the, to the right of number one on the x-axis, there's four observations. Yeah. Those are, they're actually classified as no, even though they were yes. And Okay. To the right of number one in the lower plot. Yeah. Are, yes. Okay. Uh, so they're the 22. That were classified, were classified as, yes. as. Oh, I'm sorry. Geez. They were 20, 10 that were classified as no, that were no on the lower plot. But then to the left of number one, are 22 that were classified as yes that were no. So uh, the plot makes sense. It's just the dividing line is one as opposed to zero. That's so confusing. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not sure why that is. I'm just, again, I was just doing the count of the uh, on each side. But yeah. so the... And that it kind of makes sense because the no group, you know, they were misclassified more often than they were classified correctly, whereas the yes group were almost all classified correctly. So the yes group at the top 
all those bars over to the left at the top were yeah. classified as yes. Just mm -hmm. a few of them mistakenly as no. Whereas on the bottom, only a few were correctly classified. You know, 10 is correctly classified as no. Twice as many were misclassified as yes. So that's showing you the classification is screwing up mainly in the direction of thinking the no's were yeses. Okay. That makes sense to me. Thank you for explaining it. <laughs> okay. You got there. Thank you. <laughs> you got there. Okay. And I think I'm going to talk to Omar tomorrow. So un unless there's anything else, are we good, folks? I've maybe got one quick question just to make sure I'm on sure. the track the PCA stuff, if that's all right. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm going to head out then. Thank you so much for your help. See you, Raina. There we go. Okay. Um, so I did a, the PCA on. Uh, Same three variables, eh? Yeah. Oh, so no. or I just it. dropped a drainage area. So yeah. species richness, maximum depth, mean annual temperature. Okay. I'm curious about this plot here, the maximum depth and then component one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. so the the clue is over in the loadings thing. Yeah. So what that's saying, first of all, this is on the correlation matrix, I think. Uh yeah, it should be correlation. I think I have it written as covariance. Yes, yeah, so that, that's gonna cause a problem. Because you've got three different units. Oh, right. Okay. So yeah, and what, what's happening is max depth is getting all the action because it's varying a tremendous amount. Yeah. Um, whereas species richness and, and mean annual temp in their units, excuse me, not so much. So uh, just put true there and just run it right now and we'll, that should... Basically, what's happening is that covariance is overwhelming everything else, and that's making each variable just one at a time responsible for an axis. I knew that they had to be on a different scale, or that, that they were on a different scale, and it had to be correlation, but I guess I, I didn't compute this morning when I was working on it. Happens to the best of us. <laughs> okay. Thinking about it. Thinking about it. And I love I love the SPLOM, the scatter pot matrix, but I would never use it in a talk or a paper. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's more the type of thing you use like at this point as opposed to for presentation, because there's just too much going on. There, there's a lot going on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, that looks more like what I expected. Mm. It's interesting. I mean, the so the first the first PC, I don't want to take all your fun away, but it's just like more species and deeper lake, you know, bigger lake, more species. Yeah. Kind of, which makes sense. He's you still have all those shallow places in a deep lake, but you also have the deep places kind of thing to, to grossly oversimplify stuff. But um, that's the main axis of variation there. If I look over at loading, before I see any plots, um, see how species richness 0.67, 
max depth, 0.73. So both in the same direction. And then mean annual temp is kind of small by comparison. Mm -hmm. And and the way the PCA is working, you know, that kind of 90 degrees orthogonal thing and the loaf of bread. So mean annual temp is kind of the next thing going on. Yeah. So that's why it gets the heavy weighting along with, you know, a little bit of the species richness too. But keep in mind that, that when you get positives sort of twice in a row there, mm -hmm. that's at a given level of PC1. So, you know, think about it as we're at a given level of richness and max depth. And at that level, um, the warmer it is, warm warmer lakes that are that big with that number of species have more species than cooler lakes. That's a second gradient going on that's there. Whether mm -hmm. it's something other than random variation, that's where you look at your your uh, scree plot, which I had a peek at, and it looks like you might have a second interpretable axis there. Here? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that, I mean, you've only got three possible, right? Mm -hmm. It's just one you're going to get like I had with the uh, turtle shells, which is like one biggie and then two little. Because re remembering that the third one is just arbitrary, 90 degrees to the second one. So in this case, I would say you've got two interpretable PC axes. The first one is richness increasing with max depth. And the second one is temp mac sorry mean annual temp with richness again at any particular level of that first axis and mm -hmm. you'll see that by the way the best way if that all sounds a little murky when you look at your plot and that's why the scatter plot should be there somewhere yeah it's uh, right here Like not the SPLOM, but the actual ordination plot of PC scores. Um, it it it'll be one of the it'll be in the stack of plots there. This one or no? Keep going oh, back. Earlier, okay. I think it's before the screen. I think so. It just needs a minute to catch up. <laughs> And that's why I put, um, and I don't know if you tag the points with an ID variable, so I can actually tell, oh yeah, that's uh, that's Ruth Roy Lake or whatever. It didn't, but maybe I should. Um, that might be helpful. Maybe it didn't do the plot for some reason or? Uh, it, it's this one, right? The plot the yeah. PC scores? Yeah. I'll just run it again because it might just be having a hard time. So you do have a label on there, but it's just acid damage status? Yeah. Which. Uh, you could put like lake lake name or something, which would probably be if you've got that, which would probably be more informative for you and just checking this out. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Go. Yeah, so so you can tell how valuable it would be. Mm -hmm. Um in fact, do you have lake name? Yeah, just stick it in there and rerun that. It'd be kind of cool to see how it comes out. What I called it, if I called it lake name or lake. You just click the data file. Yeah, it'll tell you. Yeah, lake name. Yeah, so this is cool. So, and I always look at the extremes to kind of help me, you know, it's, it's kind of an interaction between this and looking at those coefficients. 
So Juana Pate, and then sometimes going back to the actual spreadsheet, right? So Juana Pate's got to be high richness, deep lake, I would guess. Yeah, it's pretty, <laughs> one or both is going on. It's uh, it's like 140 meters deep, and I think there's upwards of 10 species. Okay, and then and then like uh, Kelly, unless that's Kelly number 27, or those are different. Um, so they would be kind of at the other end of the spectrum. And then and then what I do for, because you've got a second axis to interpret, is look at smooth water and panache, and they're, they're about the same spot on PC1. That's what I was talking about before. Mm -hmm. but, but panache is going to have warmer water along with more species, I would guess, than smooth water. Yeah. So kind of, you know, it's the the actual putting words on, and people often do this. Like if you were doing this in a poster or whatever, yeah. Instead of or instead of saying PC one, you'd say deeper, deeper lake, greater species richness along the x axis, and then you know warmer lake, greater species richness on the on the y axis. You know, put a phrase in. To, to that but that's that's where you really and imagine if you had like 20 variables <laughs> and yeah. it really gets to be useful because you're you're really getting across a lot of information quite efficiently yeah hmm. okay yeah that makes a lot of sense uh because panache is is just above killarney and smooth waters all the way up towards uh tomogamy so that makes a lot of sense so it's it's cooler, but they're probably both about the same max depth. Uh maybe. Maybe smooth water's pretty deep, but panache is it's I know it's big, like it's ten thousand hectares. I just can't remember what the maximum depth is. Yeah, and it's with those with those axes, so the way the way that they're scored to, and why we use the loadings like that and in interpreting is just think of it like that number times whatever panache's species richness is minus the average species richness same thing with smooth water so you're you're kind of combining those into that index to create the axis score so it could be that you know panache is just warmer and sort of same species richness kind of thing it's either or or both of the things going on have created or determine where it is on each of those axes. Hmm. But one, once you get it, then the the challenge becomes communicating that right in a yeah. way that's not like, yeah, the PCA said blah, blah, blah. And people, and I've been there, people in the audience don't know what the hell, you know, where you got it. And it's it's being able to get it across, show them like talk about the nature of panache and smooth water and that that kind of thing so that you're connecting them to the actual data that really is the is the key to using this kind of approach. Mm 